Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actory and welcome to a new series on the finer things in life. This is episode one where we're going to be covering collectible watches. Now, why are we doing this? Well, maybe before telling a CEO that their pension fund is insolvent, you might want to make a little bit of small talk because actuaries are infamous for being a bit socially awkward and it might assist you knowing a little bit about other things. So, Maybe this topic will assist you with client interactions and building business relationships. It also gives you some ideas on how to waste your big actuarial salary. But remember, we're just going to be touching on this topic. There is so much more to it. But with that, well, with that said, let's jump straight into it. And let's hit straight for the big boy. This is the Patek Philippe Henry Graves Super Complication. This is a mechanical pocket watch, 18 karat gold, and it is the most complicated watch built without the assistance of a computer. Now, it was named after the banker who commissioned it, and when we adjust for inflation, he spent $200,000. Now, if you think that's crazy, if you come to value this watch now, it is worth $24 million. And this is a little bit of a lesson. If you're smart with your watches, you can make a lot of money. But besides from bankers, who else has owned Patek Philippe watches? And we can see quite a few politicians from Queen Victoria, Pope Pius, uh, some scientists as well, Marie Curie, Albert Einstein, uh, JFK, Nelson Mandela, and we also see some artists like Pablo Picasso, Leo Tolstoy, and if you watch The Daily Show, you'll see Trevor Noah actually has a lovely watch collection. And the slogan for Patek Philippe is, you never actually own one, you merely look after it for the next generation. So let's look at their lineup. The first one we've got here is the Nautilus. It's very well known and it's designed in 1976. The second one is the 24, designed in 1999, and it has that timeless feminine elegance. The third one, the Aquanaut, is the entry level, you know, the affordable Patek Philippe, and it costs only around $30,000. Now, why do watches cost so much? A lot of the time, it also depends on its mechanics. And I mean, this stuff gets sophisticated. I mean, just, just listen to this about the turbulent. In a turbulent, the, the escapement and balance wheel are mounted in a rotating cage in order to negate the effects of gravity when the timepiece is struck in a certain position. By continuously rotating the entire balance wheel assembly at a slow rate, the turbulent averages out positional errors. Whew. And that's the whole thing. I mean, you can go look at the patents and the evolution of watches, and this stuff is fascinating. Now, Abraham Louis Berger, I don't know, I, don't know, I hope I'm saying his name right, maybe like as a rule of thumb, like the harder it is to say a watch, watch's name, uh, the more valuable it is. But this is the guy who kind of patented quite a lot of the mechanics. And let's look at some of the people who owned his watch. We've got King George III, Mario Antoinette, Napoleon Bonaparte, um, Bugatti, which you guys should know is the super fast French car, uh, Sir Winston Churchill, Vladimir Putin, and author Rubenstein, who was a musician. And their slogan is that in every woman, is a queen. And of course, it's a little bit controversial with Maria Antoinette, and he even designed a special watch for her, which is highly collectible. But let's look at their, their lineup. And I'll be totally honest with you guys, I did not know about this brand before I made this video. But apparently, you've got the Marina, the Marina Dame, and the Classique. So let's rather move on to a watch that I, I have heard of before, and uh, hopefully I'm going to pronounce this one correctly, the Audemars Piguet. And this was, well, they created job, one of the first luxury sport watches. And that's why when we look at some of their owners, you should recognize quite a lot of these names. We've got Michael Schumacher, Sachin Tenduka, Serena Williams, Leo Messi, uh, Roel McEnroy, LeBron James, and then a whole bunch of celebrities, Tom Cruise, Kim Kardashian, John Mayer, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jay-Z, Harry Styles. And I know you guys are all thinking, who is J-Hope? Well, if you don't know who J-Hope is, you need to go Google BTS, watch their YouTube videos. They are insane. Anyway, coming back to, to the watches. Um, their main one is the Royal Oak. And if you're thinking to yourself, hold on, that, that looks very similar to the Nautilus that we, that we discussed earlier. And that is because both were designed by Gerald Genter. Um, and we're going to see that this watch was inspired by the traditional diving helmets. And that's where the, the kind of idea of the screws comes from. Now, 
the royal oak comes in many different colors and this is one of the ways that that it was presented which if you're thinking hold on that looks familiar you might have seen the the hublot big bang which i absolutely adore i love this watch but let's be serious it it is a replica of of the ap and i mean this is it. In, in 1980, eight years following the Royal Oak's introduction into the market, which, like I said, is based on the diving helmet, the Hublot designers were in the midst of creating a nautical-inspired timepiece. And among the various influences considered, they narrowed down on the porthole, a small round window mounted onto a ship's hulls to emit light and air. And, I mean, the French word Hublot also means porthole. So Hublot really wanted to insist that they didn't copy anyone. They were quick to point out the differences. You know, the Royal Oak was octagonal, that's a big word, where the Hublot will be round. The Royal Oak comes with a steel bracelet, Hublot will come with a rubber one. The Royal Oak was automatic, the Hublot will be quartz powered. Gosh, we haven't even touched on the whole quartz crisis, and that's a big topic in in watch, watch theory. Um, But also the early Hublots would have a cover attached to it, mimicking the closing and opening of an actual porthole where the Royal Oak did not have one. So Hublot was like, we did not copy anyone. But then Rolex brings out the Rainbow Daytona. And what does Hublot do? Oh, wow. What what, what a coincidence. Okay. Then Ricard Mill brings out this magnificent beast. And then Hublot is like, oh, Oh wow! Um, no, no, this it's it's very different to to our watch, and and this is this is something about watches is a lot of them do inspire each other. I mean, Rolex has got some designs that have been copied by almost every other brand, so it's crazy out there. But like I said, this video I just wanted to give a very broad summary. I wanted to touch on some of the big brands. I wanted to look at some of the famous owners who were the designers. Look at a little bit of the mechanics play around with history, and of course, focus in on some of the drama uh, that is all contributes to lovely conversation that you can have with clients. So look out for what watch they're wearing, and hopefully this video can inspire a little bit of small talk. But coming up in the series, I've got a whole bunch of topics that I want to discuss with you guys. But if you've got any ideas of your own, please let me know in the comment section. And also, yeah, maybe let me know which watch was your favorite. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next few videos. Keep well. Cheers.